hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial uh, in the previous uh, videos we discussed uh, about nodal analysis the basic concepts of uh, nodal analysis and uh, we solved uh, two or three problems related to that <coughs> in today's video we are going to discuss some of the concepts associated with nodal analysis some special cases okay so the concept which we are going to discuss today is nodal analysis with voltage sources this is the concept if you remember in mesh analysis we discussed a special case as mesh analysis with current sources so here it is the opposite here it is nodal analysis with voltage sources now we all know that mesh analysis is based on Kirchhoff's voltage law nodal analysis is based on Kirchhoff's current law so in mesh analysis if there is a independent or dependent voltage source present it makes no difference to pay any special attention to that because it is based on voltage okay KVL Kirchhoff's voltage law similarly in nodal analysis if there is an independent or dependent current source present in the circuit it needs no special attention because it is based on Kirchhoff's current law current is the factor involved the parameter involved but if there is an independent or dependent current source present either at one end of the mesh or in between two mesh then it deserves some special attention the super mesh concept comes into play similarly in nodal analysis if there is a voltage source an independent or dependent voltage source at one end or in between two nodes then this case requires some extra special attention and uh, here the concept of super node comes into play okay mesh analysis with current sources in between leads to super mesh nodal analysis with voltage sources in between two nodes leads to super node okay we'll discuss in detail it is just a brief introduction into the nodal analysis with voltage sources okay okay let us uh, discuss uh, the nodal analysis with voltage sources let us just uh, take our discussion forward so here we have is a circuit okay as you can see it involves some network of resistors and it has an independent voltage source and there are three nodes okay if I name them there are three nodes 1, 2 and 3 and this is the ground connection. Now this circuit if we deal through nodal analysis then it will require us to pay some special attention why because in between node 1 and ground the ground is also called as reference node okay in some books it might also be written as reference node or ground okay there is a voltage source between node number one and ground so if I ask you what will be the voltage at node one what do you think the voltage will be so let us just uh, redraw this portion okay this portion okay 
if we redraw it it looks something like this okay now here the voltage is 0 volt here let's say it is v1 okay here it is 0 volt here it is v1 at node 1 this much of portion i am talking about so if we apply kvl here it will be v1 minus 10 minus 0 is equal to 0 okay that implies the voltage at node 1 is equal to 10 volt okay the voltage at node 1 is simply 10 volt so the conclusion that we draw here from this analysis is that okay please if you can if you want to write it down you can also write it down is that when you come across a circuit where a voltage source okay a voltage source be it independent or dependent is connected between any particular node and ground okay any particular node and ground or reference node then the voltage at that particular node is equal to that specific constant voltage source or that independent or dependent voltage source so here in between node 1 and ground 10 volt is connected so the voltage at node 1 is also equal to 10 volt simply you just you can just conclude directly that voltage at node 1 is 10 volt because it is connected in between node 1 and ground but the voltage at node 2 and 3 is not equal to 10 volt okay it is not equal to 10 volt because there is some extra connection of resistors there here there is no resistor or anything like that here simply in between node 1 and ground or reference node a uh, voltage source uh, independent voltage source 10 volt is connected so the voltage at node 1 is simply 10 volt here is the proof we applied kvl and we got the result so you don't need to do all these things okay if you are a beginner you can start off by making some analysis but as you practice more and more as you come across more and more circuits and you get acquainted with them you can simply conclude that if a voltage source is connected between a particular node and ground then the voltage at that node is equal to that connected voltage source the magnitude of the connected voltage source okay the same value and the same uh, uh, magnitude and the sign also will remain the same okay so the voltage at node 1 here is 10 volt okay so this is the first conclusion and this is the first case a voltage source connected between a node and ground okay this is case 1 okay so Previously, we discussed uh, the nodal analysis with voltage source connected between node and ground. So, we are taking the same circuit, but we are going to make one change. Okay? By removing this resistor in between node 2 and 3, what we are going to do is that we are going to replace it with a voltage source okay an independent voltage source let's say the magnitude is 5 volt okay so this is the second case where a voltage source be it dependent or independent is connected between two nodes okay so this is the second special case of nodal analysis with voltage sources now here a voltage source is present in between two nodes so here do not make the mistake of assuming that v2 
is equal to 5 volt plus 5 volt because plus sign is connected to here and V3 is equal to minus 5 volt. So many students make this mistake when they are in the introductory stage of learning network theory. This is a serious mistake. Don't make it. <coughs> okay. In especially in cases where a voltage source is present in between two nodes, the concept of super node comes into play. This node 2 and 3 okay node 2 and 3 combined is called as the super node okay node 2 and 3 combined together forms the super node Okay, and if we apply KVL here, okay, if we apply KVL here from node 2 to 3, it will look something like this. Okay, let's say this is node 2, this is the voltage source which is connected and this is node 3 okay so in between node 2 and ground let's say the voltage is v2 and in between node 3 and ground let's say the voltage is v3 so if we apply kvl in this direction starting from in this direction it will look something like uh, let us write it here okay v2 minus 5 minus v3 is equal to 0 okay v2 minus 5 minus v3 is equal to 0 or v2 minus v3 is equal to 5 foot this is an important equation okay it is called as the auxiliary equation like we did in the super mesh in super mesh it was in terms of current if you remember in super node it is in terms of voltage the auxiliary equation is in terms of voltage this equation is called as the auxiliary equation okay so v2 minus v3 is equal to 5 volt the voltage difference between the two nodes okay another important thing let us uh, remove all these things okay Suppose we have to apply KCL, okay. Suppose we have to apply KCL. Now we have to assign, let us say we assign current uh, notations, okay. We assign current notations. Let us say this one is I1, this one is I2, I1 flowing through 2 ohm, I2 flowing through 4 ohm, and uh, let us say this one is I3 and this one flowing through 6 ohm is I4 okay so this node 2 and 3 okay this node 2 and 3 together behaves as one node okay it behaves as a single node here we will not uh, uh, assume that an extra current is flowing here let us name it uh, I, f I1, I2, I3, I4, I5 we will not do anything like that it will be wrong no need to assume anything inside it behaves as one node okay it behaves as one node okay node 2 and 3 
combined together behaves as one node no need to assume anything inside of that okay it has a voltage source in between two nodes so it behaves as one node two and three behave as a single node called as super node so the kcl equation will be i1 is flowing towards the super node see uh, let us let me write it in this way 2 3 super node here it is if we look at this this is 2 ohm this is i1 which is flowing in this direction then we have this 4 ohm resistance with I2 flowing ok then we have this 8 ohm resistance with I3 flowing downward and then we have a 6 ohm resistance with I4 flowing downward. So, if you see I1 and I2, okay, I1 and I2 are flowing towards the super node 2, 3, okay. Here also, if you can see I1 and I2, here 2, 3 represents the super node, okay, 2 or 3, it represents the super node, nodes 2 and 3 combined, okay. Okay, so if you can see I1 and I2 are flowing towards the super node, I3 and I4 are flowing away from the super node. So, the nodal equation will look something like this current flowing towards the super node will be on one side, and currents flowing away from the super node will be on the other side this will be the KCL equation ok this will be the KCL equation ok always combine the two nodes where there is a an independent or dependent voltage source in between consider them as one node see for simpler analysis for your sim understanding i have combined them and named the node as 2 3 this is the super node combined with 2 and 3 node here i1 is flowing towards the super node i2 is flowing towards the super node i3 is flowing away from the super node i4 is flowing away from the super node okay so the nodal equation looks like this i1 and i2 flowing towards are on one side i3 and i4 flowing away are on the other side okay so this is how you deal with uh, circuits with an independent or dependent voltage source connected between two nodes using nodal analysis okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much